Have you ever gotten that call? The one in the middle of the night? The one that you're supposed to answer because it's from an American relative you never talk to and the only reason they'd be calling is because it's a fucking emergency? Well, I did. And no, I didn't answer it. It's not like I'm an uncaring prick, you see? It's just that that particular night, I I'd gotten drunk for, for the first time in a long time. And because of my mental impairment, I didn't wake up. Start your engine! The general consensus among academics is that there are two types of dreams. Dreams that your mind makes up to help you work out problems or alert you to ones you may not recognize. And then there's the batshit crazy dreams. These are usually characterized by an epileptic smattering of pulp culture you've recently ingested via social media or some semi-suspect spank site. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one is which. Am I trying to tell myself something? Or have I just not had a steady girlfriend since college? But whatever the case may be, sometimes you just have to enjoy the ride. I remember reading once that people don't remember their dreams because a chemical in the brain is released that causes the dream memory to be wiped out from the conscious mind. I often wonder why? And what would happen if you did remember your dreams? Would you just go mad because the line between fact and fiction had been erased? But when you think about it, it is the cosmic secret. The knowing of which could also shed light on what happens after you die. Could there be an alternate universe where the self is the creator? Where intent is the master of history and truth? Is everything that happens in our lives chosen by us in the dream world? Pulled from a spectrum of possibilities running concurrently at all times like an algorithm? My father was here, he would no doubt say something like, There you go, off on a tangent again. Oh, it's good to be smart, but for fuck's sake, could you keep your smarts here, in the real world?
bathroom. Gasser. Finally pleased to make your acquaintance, I guess. Oh, sorry, how rude of me. You mind if I come in? Thanks. You know, whenever I spoke to my dad on the phone, all I would ever hear is you in the background screaming like a spoiled little brat. Yeah, yeah, that was me on the phone. <sighs> Just all of your screws, rivets, belts and bolts working together to make this enormous racket like you knew it was me. You know what really pissed me off? Is that you, you were the only thing that dad spoke about after mom died. Yeah. Fucker used his life insurance to come over here and bill you. <laughs> and now he's left you too. <laughs> he's left us both. Which, in a way, is kind of funny, because I guess that makes us family, if you think about it. You know, like, half-brother orphans or something. What's wrong? You don't want to talk? Okay. Okay. I know I had to make you talk. Hey, Dad. You're going to be able to come back to my graduation, aren't you? Oh, son. You know, ever since them Towleys took down them two buildings over here, you know, I haven't much time now to be up in those friendly skies myself, you know. Plus, I have delivery coming at the end of the month. And you wouldn't want me to be missing that now, would you? You for real, Dad? Just turn the fucking key, kid. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Give her some gas. Just pop it. We don't want to be testing her, like, too soon. You know what we're doing today? We are driving this baby in a contest! 
And we're playing for pink slips! How'd you like that? How about we put something in that floppy fringe of yours and take it out of your eyes? Bye. Grab the grease. Get over here! We were gonna race for a pink slip, but your daddy didn't have the heart. I mean, this shit isn't even legal. Greece is more than just some silly musical, you tosser. It's a feckin' way of life. It's war paint. It's the code. Live by the code, boy. Come on, Paul. Come on. Be a man. Come on. No, you want to. You know you want to. Do I look better than me, Dan, in this? Got you, fucker. <laughs> hey, these guys are crazy. Just do what you're told. Philip was always kind of a madman. And I guess that's why I'm such the opposite. I appreciated his passion. But I didn't want to be some loose cannon that's always letting people down, like he did. Start your engine! But I guess it's time for me to let it go. I mean, even if just to allow myself to become more complete, to become a man. I can't just embrace the logical machinist inside me and ignore the animal. I mean, no bullshit. I have no fucking idea how this whole thing really came into being or if it's even fucking real. But God damn it, it's cool. So let's fucking do this. Let's go! Maybe reality got a bit dicey there. 
But that's okay in life, I guess. You don't always have the time to judge right or wrong, even truth versus fiction. You just have to trust your gut and give it all you've got. Oh, my God.